This is the third chain of islands, which is the third in the series of baffle reefs going from San Antonio Bay to Aransas Bay. At one time, there were three islands here. I used to spend the night right here. There were mesquite trees on that island. And the uh, crown of the reef was very similar to the highest crowns that we showed here on Carlos Reef. They ran, it ran continuously from the barrier island to the mainland, right back in here where it intersects Belden Reef. It's been diminished uh, substantially. These images illustrate the structural loss that has occurred at Third Chain of Islands between 2013 and 2022. These changes are the result of many factors, but we can only focus on man's influence on the structure of these reefs as they become more vulnerable to degradation. Trying to prevent the damage that Mother Nature has caused is a waste of time and resources. We can't prevent tropical systems and floods. We can't do much to alter salinity. We can't avoid drought. But we can influence our own behaviors, which is what we are proposing to do to keep this resource intact. We must endeavor to restore these reefs to their original state so they can again function efficiently as a baffle in the movement of water through this fragile area. The third chain of islands were a mainstay in attenuating the wave action coming out of Mesquite Bay and ultimately into Carlos and then to Aransas Bays. You know the story, but we must look at what's happened to these structures. We must protect them for the benefit of the resource so that future generations won't suffer the consequences of our inaction. It's up to us. You can see from the watercolor in this aerial image how the reef has directed current and created different levels of turbidity. This generally illustrates its influence on the habitat. The Coastal Fisheries staff at Texas Parks and Wildlife has already proposed the closure of these reefs to the oyster harvest. The Coastal Resource Advisory Council, scientists, and multitudes of sportsmen all support this closure. Yet here we are in round two of this effort because of the objections of people who profit from the sale of this public resource. Dang, that level of influence is hard to take. The oystermen have no ownership in the public reefs, only a boat license issued by the Parks and Wildlife Department allowing them to harvest in accordance with department rules. All this highlights the value of these reefs and punctuates the importance of protecting them. Every once in a while we have to stand up and say this is the right thing to do. When future generations come along, they will know that someone cared.